Hello, I'm Dr. David Leland, here to lead you across the gold bridge to better academic writing. Now, academic writing is more than just answering the questions that are on the page. It is there to help you understand how to develop the skills and communicate better. It will be of use to you in school, at university, and beyond university in every academic and business situation that you have. Academic writing is a bit of a chore, but learning how to do this necessary thing very well is going to help you make your life easier and your communications clearer. It will help you get through academic situations and it will be something that you will join millions of other people who have learned how to do this kind of writing and have been able to get through the tests quite well with it. Now, academic writing is a formula that we follow to communicate clearly. It is a way of putting together our communication and our writing, but not only that, our speaking, so that we have a beginning, a middle, and an end, so that we develop our arguments logically, so that we consider all the alternatives, and we reach a reasonable conclusion that people can agree with quite readily because we have shown them and communicated very nicely about all of the choices that are at hand. So it is not a formal style, but it is a formula. Academic writing is quite a lot like playing the blues. Now the blues is an American folk style that has become a very popular form of music around the world and it is basically a very simplistic and repetitive rhythmic and harmonic style which allows a very very great freedom to have melodic vocal, guitar, or piano improvisations and uh, complications of many different wonderful types of music on top of the basic, solid, stable, predictable, rhythmic, and harmonic foundation. And this is what we need to think about when we have academic writing. Our academic writing is going to follow some very closely aligned standards all around the world so that we can have everyone understand very clearly what we are doing, what we are thinking about, how we have considered our arguments, and how we have logically and reasonably made everything work together so that we can present an argument that is not argumentative but very academic and reach a conclusion that is extremely reasonable making it extremely easy for a grader on a test to say well done making it extremely easy for your professor at university to say yes I agree and making it very easy for someone in business to say good points well made well thought out I'll give you the money to fund that product project or business that you have in your mind so academic writing is definitely your way forward to having a better life academically and in business. Now, what is it? It's quite simply thought of in many circles as good writing. It is easy to read. The ideas are expressed 
clearly, maybe even a little bit simply, but quite clearly. And clarity of sentences and direct verbiage, the choice of words, to extremely fully and clearly show an understanding of the situation and communicate the points that you want to make, the conclusion that you want to reach, and promote the result that you would like to have come from the paper, whether it's academic or business. It has a particular structure. We have a beginning where we introduce the topic that we want to talk about and we preview the points that we're going to make, giving an indication of the conclusion that we're likely to reach. Then there is the body, and each paragraph of the body has one point that is being made and one piece of example, evidence, or fact that will support and nail down this point that is being made. And the points go from the broadest point to the most narrow, exact result point that we want to have before we reach our conclusion. Now, for the test of TOEFL, IELTS, SAT, GMAT, GRE, we want to use one point and one piece of evidence to support that point in every paragraph. That's it. Short, quick, clear, little paragraphs. Three of them in the body of the piece and then the fifth paragraph is your conclusion. It will be a reasonable conclusion. It will be not argumentative in a street fight sort of I'm against you sort of argument, but scholastic academic arguments are very strongly put forward, supported by reasonable evidence, logical reasoning, and good points with clear pieces of evidence that support those points. So we are going to have about 25 minutes on a test to put this kind of writing together. That is to think about it, to write it out, and don't forget you've got to check your writing before you hand it in, before you leave it to be graded because <clears throat> they're gonna check you. You'd better check you before you give them that chance. And we want to make sure that we don't get too wordy. 250 to 300 words is what we want. Your academic test paper should fit on one side of one piece of paper. If it's longer than that, you're probably in trouble. So you need to exercise uh, these things, practice expressing your ideas quickly and clearly. It isn't easy. It really isn't easy getting the hang of this because we've probably been taught something extremely different in our schools. We've probably been taught to express ourselves in these very long erudite sentences with many relative or dependent clauses. This was it, so that would be the result, and there would be some other considerations which would give us this, and it's all one sentence. Well, my God, you've gotten 30 or 40 words longer than a single paragraph should be in an academic writing, and you have lost track of what is the subject, what is the verb, and what is the object of the main sentence. So you've given yourself a very big opportunity to confuse your reader. Don't do it. Please don't do it. You need to learn how to express yourself in short, clear, concise sentences so that everyone knows exactly what you said. And 
penmanship. Penmanship, how it looks on the page. Now, is critically important and most people ignore it, but if the grader cannot read your paper, they're going to give it a zero. No matter how much you love your paper, if they can't tell what you have written, it's out. So please practice writing clearly and make sure that you're able to write a clear sentence with clear words so that everybody is able to read it. So the situation with standardized tests for us here is, well, it's a little bit of a sad story, but it gives you a big opportunity. Now, the situation with Chinese applicants for the IELTS is poor. An average score of 5.5 is the Chinese national average. This is not good enough for a good university and it is not good enough for an emigration to New Zealand or Australia where at least you need a 6.5. If you want to go to a top-ranked American or British university, you'll have to have a 6.5 or a 7 anyway. So shooting for the Australian, New Zealand average of 6.5 is not a bad benchmark to look at. I'm sorry to say that also the most recent TOEFL averages for China place China just a little bit above the poorest and worst achieving nations in the world. China has a ranking of 105 out of 136 nations that are recorded for the TOEFL examination. And the SAT and the GMAT, while they have not released national averages, the evidence that they do tell us about is that the grades are very poor, but that means that you have a lot of opportunity to improve. You can do better than this national average. We know that many Chinese students go to the best universities in the world and as a matter of fact you will find that when you get to the United States where the GMAT, SAT and TOEFL scores are based that the top of the scores is in the possession of Chinese American students very much of the time. So Chinese people can do this. We know this worldwide. You can be among the people who do it by breaking out of the mold. So don't compare yourself to what the other people are doing. Don't just say to yourself, well, I'm as good as he is, so I'll do well, won't I? You don't want that. Don't look at them because they're not a good example. You need to look internationally for your good examples. You will certainly find them and you can certainly be among them. We know it. It has happened. It's happening quite often and you can be among them. Now, part of this is that there are built-in weaknesses in the educational system. The curriculum and the way the curriculum is taught here in China at the public schools is rather weak and it's kind of a question why this keeps happening because we know that people know about it but the way that they teach you is very standardized and we educators know what the mistakes are, we know what many of the weak points are, and we can help you fill in the missing pieces 
and it will take some time. Sometimes you need to even get out of bad habits that they have taught you, but we know what the pattern is and we can help you to having a very much better pattern and we can improve your English in a very solid way if you'll stick with a good teacher who can help you through that very good curriculum that can help check the errors. Now, the basics are that you need to have a native speaker who is a good academic achiever and someone who has taken these tests and has had a good success in their academic career. Then, you need to work with someone who has been trained as a teacher because not everyone can teach and so not everyone can speak well even if they're native. Even people who speak well, not everyone who can speak well can teach well. You need someone who can give you the whole package. You want the whole set of qualifications and that will help you have better English, better academic writing, better communication, a better academic career, and a better business life after that. I look forward to working with you and thank you very much for your attention.